Epic Encounters, Village of the Goblin Chief. Uh, this this Epic Encounters is part of a range. So it's the the range is called Epic Encounters, and then um, the this particular one is called Village of the Goblin Chief. So um, this has goblins in it. You can see why I went for this one out of the ones available. Um, and I'd actually never heard of this until earlier in the week when the boss was looking at some stuff and just came across this. Um, and I don't know whether you would necessarily call this a small creator these days, but definitely not one of the really big ones. It's actually made by Steamforged Games, who have done... Um, what have they done? They worked with the people from Critical Role, I think, to do the Critical Role miniatures. Um, they've done quite a few different ones. Um, I know I have some other of their miniatures, which are escaping me but at the moment exactly what they are. But Steamforged Games are, are definitely not one of the... Uh, 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 one of the really big boys, but they're kind of in the middle ground. Oh, apparently they have, currently have a big Kickstarter on for Monster Hunter. Um, so let's take a look at this and what you get in this box, uh, and we can kind of go from there. So let's, let me switch over to this uh, view. Um, so, as I say, this is advertisers having everything in it you need to run a uh, an encounter, rather than, I was going to say a campaign, but that's not correct. So you get a little uh, campaign booklet. Um, Ooh, trying to animate, Katarina. That sounds exciting. What are you trying to animate? Um, so this is the uh, this is the kind of book that it comes. With. I'm not going to show you everything that it contains because I feel like that would be a bit uh, unfair on the people who kind of wrote this. But I had a quick look at it yesterday uh, so that I could knowledgeably talk about this rather than uh, you know have a have a guess at what it was going to say. But I was I was pleasantly surprised with this actually. So it's obviously so the encounter itself is a is the village of the Goblin Chief. So. Um, it gives you a bit of an introduction. This is kind of how you use the game, how you use the set. Um, it has some nice artwork in it, which is always appreciated. Um, but then it also has, rather than just being a kind of a list of this is how you do this, this is what you're meant to do. So this, for example, this page is here are some rumours that local townsfolk may have heard about this goblin village. They don't have to all be the case. You can embellish them, you can run with them, whatever. But here are some possibilities. Um, here are some possible kind of adventure hooks to get characters into this. So I think it's it's written out for me quite well, like a nice um, one shot for a D and D campaign or something like that. Um, it talks about the different locations and what's going on, um, and then it kind of gives you maps and so you can see here. So this one, this is relating to the number one on the map here. So it lays it out quite nicely, so that you can see what's going on. So this is number two on the map, number three on the map etc. I'm sure you can figure out how numbers work. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's talking. Yeah, I, I really like the way it's kind of printed behind and you've got the art. I think it's I think it's well designed. Um, and so you've got the kind of small maps here that show you, but it also comes with an actual battle map. So let's just put this to one side for a moment. Um, again, I am going to say, as I say on all these streams, I'm not sponsored by Steamforged Games or, or anything to do with this. I, I literally just pick this up and it looks quite cool. So um, this is a little bit too big for my desk here, unfortunately. But uh, you can see here, so this is a battle map. So this uh, relates to um, this relates to those images that we saw in the book. Um, so let's uh, let's change screen again just for a second. There we go. So uh, here you can see. So this is the one I was showing you before. This is, has the walkways. Uh, I have to see if I can see what's going on. There you are. So this has all the different walkways and the huts. And then when you get into one of the huts, you go into a second location, which is on the back, which is quite nice. And this this is a really kind of glossy um, kind of... It, it feels hardy. It doesn't feel like manipulating it. I'm going to rip it. It does have the issue that I'm not sure how easily this would go flat on the table because it's been folded up for a while. So you can see there, it might need a, a good long flatten i don't know how it would take to an iron but you know put it under a big heavy stack of books for a while that kind of thing um but the quality itself feels really good and um then as you carry on um you can see um that we have again so there's the second lot of locations there's a, a table there for rolling and there is then at the back you have stats for the different miniatures that you get in the box so again, I won't show you all of these because it feels a bit unfair on the people who've worked hard on them. But you can see there that that's done. And it also works as there are three different levels of play. So it, it offers you a 
basically easy, medium, and difficult down there. Uh, so you can see. No, not with this camera angle. You can't. No, fine. <laughs> but you can see there that there are different ways to play. So let's get on to the uh, the minis part of this uh, coffee chat and minis. So we'll have a look at each of these in turn. There's a few different sculpts. There are some of the same sculpts in there, but uh, yeah, there are some different ones as well. And one of the things I quite like about this is, to me, these have a quite a different feel from a lot of the other goblins, a lot of the other kind of miniature companies out of there when they're producing something. Sorry, this is making absolute racket as uh, as uh, I'm taking this apart. But you can see here, so this is the uh, this is the box, and they all come they all come pre put together. The only thing I don't quite like about it is um, I don't particularly like that they've then just stuck them onto larger round bases. They do have the Steamforged game symbol on the bottom. Just because it's uh, a little bit difficult then to kind of blend it in to make it look like a nice base. But I'll take a look at each of the sculpts in turn and we can uh, see what we think. There's quite a few different sculpts. So let's do that and then I'll put this big box away. Uh, I'll get actually I'll get the rule book back so I can tell you what each of these are as we go along. So we have two different sculpts for a Bloodwood Goblin, and they are um, these two, I think. Um, so there we go. So you can see there uh, that it's quite it's very well. Um, kind of detailed it does look really interesting in the way it's put together it absolutely does and that's kind of why I went to this when I was talking about the min uh, board games with miniatures that's why this kind of stuck in my mind it's it's not a board game I mean I guess you could just play it for a couple of hours and, and see how the encounter goes or you could put it into uh, the uh, put it into the uh, into your longer campaign but so let's just see if we can get an even closer look if it will focus for me it's focusing nicely on my fingers, but that's not what we need. Um, yeah, and I think the, the sculpting is really nice, and I think, in general, the actual moulding and creation of the miniatures is also pretty good. There's, there's a little bit of, of mould line and extra bits and pieces, but nothing too too difficult. And this is... Uh, I might have got these uh, slightly wrong in terms of what they are in the book, but that doesn't really matter, does it? But this is the other... This is another goblin. There we are, and you can see that he's got his he's got his uh, little stomach out. Uh, he's decided to wear a crop top. All good. Must be warm wherever they are. But yeah, I think I think the the sculpts are kind of interesting. They're a bit more forest gobliny, which I don't think is something that you necessarily see all that often with uh, with um, goblins at, currently in terms of sort of D and D and things like that. So yeah, I like them. So that's those two let's see if i can figure out what comes next uh yeah i might have shown you the wrong minis for them conceivably but that's all right we also have a blood dart goblin enforcer who is uh this guy so it does actually i if i'd noticed this earlier <laughs> it does actually show me like on the page here so there's the blood dart goblin enforcer and that's what the face of the miniature looks like which again is quite a nice uh, nice way of doing it um Let's see if we can get that. There we are. So this guy is an enforcer. And again, a, a kind of similar style, but they are definitely unique and interesting sculpts, which I think is quite cool. Uh, I, I, I do like the bow. We were, we were talking recently. I was putting together some goblins from Mantic, actually. Um, and we were talking about whether I should give one a bow and a sword, as if he was about to shoot his sword out of a bow. These... Uh, these ones do have swords and bows, but they're not trying to use them at the same time. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you can kind of make sense of that, really. But that means, obviously, in the stats, they have both of them. So you can use uh, either of, either a melee attack or a uh, detail attack. So, yeah, these are good. I, I've, I've generally had good experiences with Steamforged games, I have to say. Um, and as I, as I mentioned, they, they do have a few slight, like, mold line and flashing issues. But it's nothing... Um, nothing too horrendous by any means. Uh, okay, so this guy is called a Bloodwood Goblin Frog Chewer. Uh, uh, so 
he's actually got in his hand, I don't know how, how well you'll be able to see it, but he's actually holding a frog. There you are. So you can kind of see it there. Just sitting on his hand. Uh, yeah, absolutely. The, yeah, the, the plastic is not really bendable. This is quite hard plastic. It's like... Um, it's quite similar to like a Mantic Games plastic or um, it's not too dissimilar, I guess, from like a Games Workshop plastic, but uh, it's that same kind of thing. But yeah, so this is a frog chewer. So uh, yeah, absolutely. Better than mushrooms. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so you can see there. Uh, he does have quite a quite a crazy look. On his... Yeah, actually, that's a that's a good comparison. They are very similar to like Bones Black from Reaper. Um yeah, absolutely. With the tongue sticking out and the very wide eyes. I wonder why they eat these frogs. I can't imagine. I think the uh, comparison to mushrooms might be a good one. Uh, so he's he's holding a frog in his hand and a uh, that's a staff. Like, but it but it's kind of like a spear as well because he actually has a. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's meant to be stone or metal. I can't see at this point. Probably stone, I would think. But yeah, he's uh, he's holding that staff, stroke spear. <laughs> I I can safely say that I have never licked a poisonous frog. There you are. Uh, yeah, that's true. You could you could create your own items uh, stats for that. As I say, they do all have their own uh, D and D stats in the book, so you can work with them. But yes, you can uh, you can absolutely build things for that. Yeah, I think it is a snake curled around the spear, uh, or it could be a vine. No, it's a vine actually. It's a vine that's curled around the, curled around the spear. But yeah, it's uh, it's very cool. Very nice. Um, okay, so where are we next? So we now have arrow tongue tree frogs. I'm guessing these are not the ones that you'd go around eating because da 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 da. Here they are. Uh, so this is a goblin riding a frog. So yeah, you, you definitely would have to be careful not to get this guy's little cousins when you're trying to eat frogs, wouldn't you? Um, yeah, which I, I absolutely love. I love the idea of them riding frogs. And again, this so this is kind of, for me, it's that thing of, um, it just feels like quite a different idea, quite a different feel for goblins from in a lot of places where they are, um, they're, they're very kind of similar. Whereas these, um, I guess in the sense that you have like elves and you, you have wood elves as specialization, this feels very much like wood goblins to me. So yeah, you can see there, it's, it's kind of like a little bit of an armoured frog. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, that's amazing. So they've actually put armour on the frog. So I don't know how well you can see it, but like this, uh, this bit on here is actually like attached to, I mean, sorry, they've put it on. So yeah, they've armoured up the frog. Uh, exactly, yeah, you often get goblins on wolves or spiders or things like that, but yeah, this I think this is the first time I've ever seen a frog. Uh, if you like frogs, you should check Numa by Tiago Rolim. It is a game of frog people on Tokugawa era Japan. Ah, oh, interesting. There you are. Uh, yeah, so that's cool. And there's, a, there's actually another sculpt of them. So we'll have a quick look at that one. No, not that one. This one. So this one is an archer on frog, on tree frog. And again, the uh, the work on this is very cool. I think the frog is, if not identical, very similar. Um, but yeah, obviously this one is an archer, so that's very cool. Uh, and again, they've got the armor, they've got the like seat on there for the goblin. Yeah, very cool, very fun. I like it. So those are kind of the, I guess, the frog cavalry, if you like. And then we have two more to go. I'm actually going to uh, show you them slightly out of order. So this next one. Uh, so this is a Bloodwood Goblin Hetman, which I don't know if that's a, a term for something. It's not something I've ever come across. Yeah, I love, the, I, I love the Switch Hunter Frogs. I think they're absolutely uh, awesome. So uh, this is, I think this is like the chief, I think. Uh, so there's only one of this dude. Uh, yeah, tiny leaves. The... the, the um, kind of uh, attention to detail on these is really good. And that's that's what I love about um, a, a good miniature. It doesn't have to be, uh, I mean, these are, a, there is a lot of detail going on, but um, I think it doesn't necessarily have to be as long as there's a good attention to detail and it, it kind of really hangs together and makes sense. So this is the chief. 
and you can see him there and you can also see him there so yeah again another very cool one but I've saved what I think is the coolest mini to last uh, yeah he's he's wearing a mask absolutely um, yeah so he's got a wooden mask on but you can see his big ears sticking out here and his uh, many earrings yeah so ah ah the hooded man okay the hooded one there you are yeah and uh, I braided I think that's his beard and also like hair kind of look a bit dreadlocky I guess but um, yeah uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I assume that's meant to be hair. I don't think I've ever seen a goblin depicted with much hair at all, let alone long hair. So I don't know if it's actually meant to be hair. I'm going to have to look into that and see how we uh, how that goes. But yeah, um, that's uh, that's this one. And then the last miniature that I'll show you is described as a green fang flail snail. So <laughs> this is uh, this is the green fang flail flail snail that's surprisingly difficult to say green fang flail snail um and yeah you can see there that i mean i, I think this is really really cool you can see the the work that's gone into the top of the shell yeah so this is uh yeah really cool i really like this um so yeah these are going to be a lot of fun to paint i think um it's um yeah and I, i'm pretty sure a flail snail is fairly established as D, &D uh is that a three inch base that's a very good question it's certainly something along those lines uh let's have a look i mean i can show you a size comparison of all these minis if that's helpful so what does anyone happen to know what size a stormcast comes on from games workshop uh because that's uh this is a a storm cut. So in terms of the size of the miniature itself, that's goblin. I should tell you what. Let's let's find a more standard 28 mil size because um, stormcaster a little bit on the large. I do have a cutting back with centimeters. <laughs> I knew that. I was testing you, Carlos. I was testing you. Ah oh dear, I'm being an idiot. So uh, it is. Um, no, it's not uh, three inches. It's about two inches because that's about five centimeters. Uh, so. I think it's probably done in centimetres, because obviously, as I'm sure you know, there's 2.54 centimetres in an inch. So, yeah, it could be actually, it could be a two-inch base. Um, but yeah, so it's, uh, that is a two-inch base, that is also a two-inch base. And then all of the smaller ones, oh no, they're not all on the same size. So you've got two-inch bases on the frogs and the flail snail. You've got, I would guess probably about a one inch base on the uh, kind of bigger goblins and then an even smaller base like a two centimeter base for the tiniest goblins uh, but yeah I will do a size comparison anyway just because that's sometimes helpful so this is a fisher woman from reaper miniatures um, and this is the goblin next to her so definitely smaller they're not like the tiniest size of goblins that you ever find you do sometimes find goblins which are like half human size or something but definitely smaller than human um the this is the kind of enforcer who again is slightly smaller than a human but not a lot in it uh, actually it might be more accurate to raise it up slightly because i've got a bit of a base on this one and then this is the uh, frog so actually even on frog they're not much taller than uh, they're not much taller than a human. Yeah, that's true, actually. That's probably a good thing. Uh, that uh, They're probably roughly kind of small, medium, and large size creatures. Um, but, but actually, as I say, this, in terms of height, is not that different. Obviously, in terms of, like, length is, uh, is a bit different. And then the flail snail is, yeah, he's a, he's a big old chonky boy. Like that. So, yeah. I think I like the idea that this Reaper Fisherwoman has just wandered in and is trying to like harvest a sea snail or something, and it's twice the size that she is. Uh, that makes me uh, surprisingly happy. There we are. So yes, that is um, that is the miniatures for that. And so obviously I can't. Uh, this arrived during the week, so I can't actually speak for 
whether the encounters are balanced, how well done that kind of size side of things is. But I am pleased. I think the miniatures are good. I think the way the um, uh, have I put these in the right place? No. Um, I think the way that the uh, kind of adventure itself is set out and written is very good. Um, so yeah, I think it's very promising. Um, I may try and uh, convince someone to play a game with it at some point, so we can test out exactly how it works. Uh, I know it's it's really hard to find people who are willing to play D and D. It's it's it is really tough. It's a hard life I lead. Um, but yeah, that's uh, so. I think it will be good to actually properly test it out at some point. But uh, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Steamforge games are quite bad at putting a lot of packaging, and I've commented on that before. This is less bad, I think. But yes, it's it's still not ideal. But it's it doesn't feel like they've added just vast amounts for no reason. So. Uh, if I hold that up to this camera, uh, let's go to this one, like that, and then you can kind of see, so it does actually fill up quite a bit of this. Obviously there is some gap under here, I'm not sure why I'm tickling these goblins, um, but there is a gap under here, but it's difficult to know how to deal with that because they are different size. 